Hi there, this is Ruben Lerner, and you are watching my Python Standard Library Video Explainer series. And this time, we are going to look at some alternative ways to create dictionaries. These are a little unusual. You might need them on occasion. So I can say t equals a1, b2, c3, of course. I can create a dictionary whenever I want in this way. And this is one of the standard ways to create it, of course, perhaps the most standard way. Let's say that I want um, e to point to, to refer to that dictionary. So I can just say e equals d. And now e and d, or d and e, are two names that refer to exactly the same dictionary. So changes to d will be reflected in e and vice versa. So if I say what's d, what's e, that's fine. If I say e of, let's say, x equals 100, well now e has changed, but so has d, because once again they are exactly the same. If I say is you know, D is E, sure enough, they're two names that are pointing to exactly the same object. But what if I don't want that? What if I want to copy D? What if I want E to contain the same keys and values that D does, but I don't want it to refer to the same object? I want them to be equal but not identical, equal but not is. So I can say E equals D dot copy. And now D equals equals E. Yes, they are. They are equal. But if I say E of X equals 100, well, d of x equals 100, so I've changed d, but I've not changed e. No longer are d and e equal. All right. Also, when I first do that copy, we can double check. Are they the same? d is e, and it'll say no. They are not the same object in memory. They might have the equal values, but they're not the same object. So this is one way that you can create a new dictionary based on an old one pretty easily. Right? The other alternative way to create a dictionary, and I've actually needed this on a few occasions, is a really cool method. It's a, actually a class method. Typically, we don't use class methods to create dictionaries or other types in Python. Right? If I want to create a dictionary, I'm going to use curly braces, or I'll use the dict uh, um, type as a function. I say you know, dict of a equals 1, b equals 2, c equals 3, and that's going to create a dictionary for me also. But this is a little different. I'm going to say dict dot from keys. And dig out from keys, I can say here, like, you know, A and B and C. And look what I'm going to get. I'm going to get back a new dictionary in which the keys are A, B, and C, and the values are all none. By the way, what happens if I say here from keys A, B, C, that's a string? That will also work, of course, because a string is also an iterable. And so as we iterate over it, right, it doesn't matter if it's a list or a string, although it seems a little weird to use a string here, even if technically it'll work. So what's the point? The point is often you want to, or at least I found, I want to create a new dictionary in which all the values are none or zero, and I'll show you how to do that in a moment, or some other base uh, default value, and then over time I change it. For example, I can say here from keys a, b, c, comma zero, and now what's going to happen? I'm going to get the value zero as the as the value there for each of the keys. So you can sort of start off a scoreboard this way. It's sort of kind of like a default dict, less flexible in that the keys are clearly defined when the dictionary is created. Um, but the values are there as defaults. All right, so uh, one thing that I've actually found that's a little missing that I wish would be in from keys is there's no way to run a function here that then gets the current key. I would love in many ways to have that. I think the Ruby language has that, where when you create a dictionary in this way, dynamically, it would be nice to say, well, the value is going to be the, I don't know, the ASCII value of the key that was there or something along those lines. That does not exist. You give the same value, and that value will always be used for all of your uh, uh, values in the new dictionary you created. Okay, enough on how to create dictionaries in alternative ways. I hope this was useful, and let's march along through the standard library.